If you clicked on this video, then I'm sure you're a Pokemon fan, meaning you've heard of the move Focus Energy. You know, the one that raises your chances of landing a critical hit? Unless you're playing through Generation 1, as due to an error in the games, Focus Energy actually divides your chances of critting the opponent by 4. Now is this surprising for the first installments of Pokemon? No, because those games were put together by Popsicle Sticks and Elmer's Glue. But what if I told you there was still a way for this glitched move to be a viable option in the Gen 1 games? Well, there is. This is the quest to make Focus Energy useful in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. So step one is to catch a Pokemon that has access to, of course, Focus Energy, some sort of setup move, and preferably it's fast. A perfect choice is Scyther, as it learns Focus Energy, Swords Dance, and Slash all by level up. Unfortunately though, you don't have access to Scyther until the Safari Zone, so I grabbed Squirtle, because it's the best out of the three Kanto starters and there's no debate about it, and breezed my way through the fur. <clears throat> Breezed my way through the first four gi- Okay, just make it to Fuchsia City. Scyther can be pretty tough to track down, as it only has around a 4% chance to appear in the Safari Zone. Not to mention, all you can really do is chug Safari Balls at it and hope you get lucky. After snagging it though, step two is to train it up to at least a level 35, since by then you'll have all the moves you need. Step three, the setup. Let me explain how this whole process works. If you're not familiar with Generation 1's crit mechanics, basically, the faster a Pokemon is than the opponent, the more likely it is to land a critical hit. So combine a fast mana like Scyther with a move like Slash, and you're just about guaranteed to land a critical hit every single time. That sounds nice and all, but if you didn't know, critical hits bypass any stat changes, including ones that may have benefited you. Due to this, you would think that having a move like Swords Dance on Scyther is almost pointless because you would never be able to take advantage of your attack boost. But this is where Focus Energy comes into play. By going for Swords Dance and then using Focus Energy, your chances of landing a crit drastically decrease, allowing Scyther to hit this Wild Spearow with a non-crit slash and deal more damage than it would have done with a critical slash. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why would I want to spend all those turns setting up against a level 22 Spearow when I would have knocked it out anyways? Well, while a weak Spearow couldn't withstand one slash from Scyther, other Pokemon might be able to, like this Gym Trainer's Arbok for instance. You can see that the Arbok is able to live a slash, and his Sand Slash manages to survive two of them. But by using the Focus Energy strat, Arbok becomes a one-hit KO, and Sand Slash gets taken out by two slashes instead. So although it may be quicker to just attack regularly against trainers that only own one or two Pokemon, the Focus Energy strat can be very useful for longer fights. It is worth mentioning though that this method isn't 100% foolproof, as using Focus Energy doesn't lower your chances of landing a crit to zero. As you can see here against Koga, I unfortunately still critted his muck, meaning it ended up being a two-hit KO. Anyways, the fourth and final step of this quest is to wreak havoc on the rest of the Kanto region using our beastly Scyther. And yes, that includes destroying Blaine, even though his team is full of fire types who elected to never use a fire type move. And just like that, we have completed the quest to make Focus Energy useful in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Slash probably isn't the most convenient move to pair with Swords Dance, as I'm sure there's some better options out there. Take Beedrill for instance. It already learns Focus Energy by level up, and if you give it the Swords Dance TM, then I'm sure it can become a menace with Twin Needle and Pin Missile. Nonetheless, the combination in today's video got the job done just fine. I had a lot of fun putting this little video together, and I wouldn't mind seeing if there's any other seemingly useless moves that can turn out to be effective in other Pokemon games, so if you know of any, then be sure to leave them down below in the comments. For now though, I hope you guys enjoyed, have a great rest of your day, and until next time, deuces!